live, heavy on the semi, low on the live. <laughs> one other question I thought along the same line, how many of you, you're almost a baby in your family, you're second, third? Fourth. Fourth? Oh man, I'm missing some siblings in there. Second? I should know that one. <laughs> Uno? Oldest of two. Oldest of three. Things you would have wished you took a, took advantage of in your own family systems, or your parents, or, or whatever, anything there that's worth highlighting. Well, um, I know that looking through like even just my siblings, um, uh, with age, wisdom really does come, and I, I can see that like through each of my siblings. Like I, I get not not necessarily get along with more, but like. Um, I, I seriously look up to like Janessa and Zach and Hannah, and it's not because Scott and Bria don't know what's up. It's just that uh, they I, I can really see like how things have changed for them, or they they've moved on far enough in their life that I can really like oh okay they did this right they didn't you know mm -hmm. they had to work through hard things mm -hmm. or yeah that's that's good. If you're young enough to have old enough siblings mm -hmm. that went through that yeah. Anything else in your guys' family systems that you're... I'm really glad I wasn't first. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think as parents, um, the only one here, yeah. <laughs> but, but like, like, there, like, I don't know where along the lines we figure out, because I had parents too, believe it or not. It's like, oh. where, where do we figure out? Like, they're human, like, they're trying to figure out how to parent. And so at what point, becoming an adult, you're just like, okay, I have more grace to them because, you know, they're, they have a hard life or there's stuff, stuff that they are not perfect. And so I, I think as a freshman, we don't have that perspective. Yeah. Um, Although in some cases, it's a little bit of the opposite where like the more you realize like, oh, they're human, which means they make mistakes. So then it's easier for you to like look at instructions that they've given you and instead yeah. of just taking them, you, you couldn't, you start questioning them, which yeah. is not a bad thing, yeah. but it's sometimes a dangerous thing. I've learned a lot of like what I should be doing based off of like things that they told me that they wish that they hadn't done. like. Um, things that I probably would have done if I wouldn't have talked to them and found out what they did like when they were my age and like you learn that from siblings too but when it's like your parent it's just like it's just different like hearing how my parents were in high school really influenced my decisions in my high school career mm. it's it's different like oh, being the only kid in the house like I didn't really realize that until I go to like my friend's house who have like a lot of siblings. I'm like, this is very different. Like, hmm. just like the relationship between yeah. parents and kids. And chaotic. Yeah, and chaotic. <laughs> Whenever I go to Avery's, I'm like, oh. It gets real loud real fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so bring your earplugs. <laughs> I'd say a little bit of it is taking like more responsibility in the relationships that you already have, because I know like like even sometimes. The best friends that I've had throughout, like, like kindergarten and up, the best friends. I never really knew anything about them. And I'm like, oh, their favorite color is blue. Oh, thanks, Avery. Well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like, 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 oh, their favorite color is blue, or they like this type of food. It, it, not a lot of the details were super important, and you, I slowly learned that throughout high school that like, oh, these people are actually like, like people in my life that we both have an effect on. Even if even if we graduate and we never see each other ever again, I can still make a mark right now. So, yeah. I think one thing that I realized not to get in the feels or anything, but um, I really have great parents compared to like a lot of other families I've seen. Like, they're I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I take advantage of that, but yeah. Shout out to her dad. <laughs> but one of the things, like, even that, I think there's a responsibility on all of you guys around the table. It's like, how are you going to parent one day? Because sometimes the, the pendulum will swing the other way. I don't want to be like my parents, so I'm going to be like, or I want to be like my parents, and so do I tighten up and, and make it like, no, it has to be just like my parents. Like did. unnatural, like not. Yeah. yeah, rather than like who God designed you and how. 
The statistics are crazy as far as. Um, I do not want to meet online. That just. I don't oh, she didn't show up with that. <laughs> wow. Well, that's just. No. Oh, careful what you say. Now you might meet. No. Like, oh, no. I want it to be like, <laughs> like traditional. Three, three years in the future, she's like talking to this guy online. Like, oh, crap. I really like him. Oh, no. <laughs> Why don't you want to meet someone online? Well, okay, not like a dating app. I mean, maybe like yeah. if you kind of know of them, then the, and like talk to them. But I wouldn't just like text them and probably be like, yeah. yeah. But I don't want it to be like strict dating apps. I just feel like that's fake. But that's my opinion. I'm sure some people have like are okay, but it's like not my. You're free thing. to make your own decisions. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you can like meet people like through like dating apps where like that's the intention, or you could just like. Like Facebook or Instagram, where you just like have mutual mutual friends. Yeah. Like maybe they're like I know like for athletes, like oh like they're from Pequot Lakes, like oh you know, and then you just make the connections, and then you just like meet people that you never would have like yeah. in public. But yeah, there's different when it's like strictly like oh dating app, like yeah. yeah. I feel like that's become more acceptable though in your generation than it yeah. was um, even ten years ago when that stuff was starting. Farmers only. I'm at like a complete loss when it comes to any of that. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't even know how to post anything on decision. Facebook. Uh, I didn't know what a webinar was. I was explaining that a couple days ago. Uh, webinar. Yeah. That's so when you bring but, out your weapons and you gnar them. <laughs> no. <laughs> but like, like so, like, until until Ani literally just brought it up right now, there was not even a, a vague a vagueness in my brain of like, oh yeah, dating app is a real thing. Uh, just, just. <laughs> didn't even occur to me. Like Avery trying to like, do I like them? Like, oh, I can't make a decision. I can't, <laughs> this is true. I can't swipe. I can't even swipe to get off this app. How do I get out? Uh, that's funny. It all comes back to your decision making. Dude, that's the problem, okay? What are we talking about? Oh, just We're the statistics. Parents. Yeah, and the and statistics of parents. getting married, too, of making your own families. That didn't sound right, but <laughs> you know what I mean. New, new <laughs> nucleuses of on. Oh, 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 <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah, Must have been I'm sure you guys still think about that. So it's like, but do you get anxious about the timing of that, or do you feel the need to draw a line in the sand of I'm not going to do it till after I graduate. I'm not going to like even think about dating until after I graduate, or. Um, what do you guys? I've seen that line cross. Friends. I've seen that line cross way too many times. <laughs> yeah. Like, like each of my siblings were like their own opinion on like, oh, I'll get married then, and then it's it's never correct. Every yeah. single time they're wrong. Uh, but like Bria was the most strict. Like, I, there's no way I'm getting married until after med school, and then she got married the youngest of them. Yeah. So I've just decided if I draw a line, it's just gonna backfire. It's just gonna, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Avery doesn't even know if he wants to get married. So I have just... to figure out the rest of my life first. <laughs> I think there's undue pressure in high school because of the drama sometimes that's around the dating, the uh, dating life. I don't even know what you guys call it now, but yeah, it seems like there's some. Uh, but at college, sometimes that can get amplified Dude, what's up. That? <laughs> They can get amplified up even more sometimes in college when your roommates start dating people and then you feel the sense of loneliness can be um, maybe even greater because then you don't have your family context and your new family of roommates or <coughs> to think of your military sometimes that, that that can they come back off leave or whatever and there's an undue pressure. What do I do with that tension? I think some of that tension is God designed too. He created us that way to to make decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like, especially with the next four years of like where we're all going, everyone is at such different levels of like responsibility, maturity, what they've gone through, what they can handle. Um, so it kind of just depends on the person. I think personally, like you can't really draw a line because no matter where you draw the line, everyone's at a different everyone's at a different yeah, stage well like college and like the few years beyond is really like the time where like you kind of form yourself I think where like because a lot of times like you might establish a family or establish like a job where you're gonna live where your life's gonna be 
So like I think it really just all depends on where the person is at here and like in their heart too. Like you can't really like, oh at 25 I am fully mature and like I want to get married. Like you can't really Yeah. Well what is even crazier is like we're all like are we all 18 here? Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Oh, we're all really close to 18. Okay, so like, 20, going on 21. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the man beard. That's a good boy. When's your birthday? Uh, April. Okay. Oh, nice. when, yeah, okay. Mine's in April. When is yours in April? <laughs> when is yours? I asked you first. I asked you last. <laughs> He's correct. Three, two, no. <laughs> same time, same. Mine's on the 13th. Oh, mine is five days later. Mm -hmm. So the 18th. Thank you. <laughs> it's gonna be your golden. What? Your golden birthday? Like, what? Well, <gasps> Apparently. You know what golden birthday? Does that mean I get a gold bar? <laughs> no. <laughs> it will be your golden birthday if it's only 18, and you're turning 18. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's cool. Mine's Remember that, mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, with the gold bar, please. <laughs> Oh, what were we well, about, uh, I say, oh, yeah, so, so, it's weird to like we're all 18 almost <laughs> we're almost all 18 so like the people that we know are like our peers it's not gonna be out of the ordinary for them to start even getting into a marriage relationship yeah. so it's gonna be weird to see that like because I remember like Bria talking about that when she was graduating she's like I have people that are like getting proposed to it's the summer <laughs> after graduation year like what how does that even happen but it's going to like, my mom told me the other day, she's like, did you know you're closer to having kids than being a kid? And I was like, Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. Oh, thank you. Thanks <laughs> <laughs> for ruining my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. My childhood's already been taken away the rest of it, so <laughs> don't ruin it. <laughs> don't make things worse. <laughs> she really wants to be a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, never say that again, please. <laughs> no. Honestly, I'd rather get married sooner than later, but... Me too. I don't know. I'm ready. <laughs> He's like, I'm why? Why would you do that? I don't know if I'm mature enough, but I'm ready to. Like, I'm not against it being early or whatever. I feel like I never feel like I'm mature enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... that's just, fair. Yeah. There, there's but some... That's... It's good for us to stay humble that way, too, because we think we are ready sometimes, and then it's just like, oh, I didn't know what I was getting into. <laughs> you done get wrecked like a noob. <laughs> yep. <laughs> about something else. Yeah. My, my reasoning of... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm just I'm fairly early. Oh, eat it. Oh, eat it. Okay. Eat it. No one says it like Rich. Shout out to Rich. <laughs> yes. um, oh, my reason was I wanted to be young enough so that when my kids were your age, I'd be able to run and play and do stuff with them. Whereas if I was in my 50s and I'm already feeling like it, it's harder to do those things. Like think about Amelia. She's pretty young. We had her later on in life. And so she's 10 years out of being your age. Dang, I'm only 55 she's, years old. She's 10 years younger than me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm depressed. You guys yeah. talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I and like I also thought about like I want like if I have like grandkids, I want to like be able to know them and not be like dying when they're growing <laughs> up. So, <laughs> like, so I meet you. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't no. want to be. I don't want to be like 80 years old when I have like when my grandkids are young. Like I want to be like somewhat able to function. So. <laughs> I'm sitting wrong on my lap. What's grandma sleeping? <laughs> Is she not breathing? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's where my head goes. <laughs> it's one of those days. For the past nine days. <laughs> I think there's an ideal sometimes when kids, uh, underclassmen in particular, they look up and, and sometimes their hopes and dreams and then they think, oh, that's never going to happen to me. And they get locked into this lonely thought that they can get amplified up and so that's why I thought it'd be good for you guys to talk about that right now too. None of you are engaged or so it's good so your perspective is really good to be able to share some of that with underclassmen, what you just shared. I've gone through the serious dating thing but I'm not seriously dating right now. Yeah. Shout out to all those guys. <laughs>
Sorry. Meh. That may have been borderline over it. That's what editing's for. <laughs> Some of those are worth leaving in. <laughs> Can we just to realize that Phil's unfil- the child of the group. <laughs> <laughs> Unfiltered copy, please. <laughs> Unfiltered. Unfiltered. Uh, 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 here's another question. I know I just asked a question. Here's another question of like, how do you guys perceive yourselves doing, and are you concerned, or are you excited to the point of, how are you going to do on your own as far as uh, finding fellowship when you don't have to? Yeah. When you don't have an umbrella of mom and dad, or a, a local church culture that's just like, oh, you should go to youth on Wednesday night, oh, you should go to church on Sunday. How do you anticipate your summer, fall, this time next year, are you going to be thinking, Oh man, I haven't went to church for a year. Remember that, remember that time we shot that video? That was the last time. <laughs> I've been to church since then. But you know what I'm saying? I don't know, how do you anticipate that going? It could be even in the move, like where you're going. Do you, are you going to be intentional on your own, trying to find something? Are you? Well, for me, it's a kind of almost a little bit of a different question because I know, like, fellowship wise, I will find it, because if I don't, I will go absolutely insane. Yeah. So like, that's not so much a, like, um, like, it's a mystery to me, but it's not so much a concern of mine as like, what does God want me to do? What is, what is the Jesus plan right now? Because I know, like, I have, uh, like I've been blessed with a good enough family, with uh, enough intelligence, with a good enough grades, with a good enough, uh, enough, that I could easily move on to this life and be successful as a, according to society. Mm-hmm. But I also know that God's not calling me to do that right now. He wants me to do something else for Him. And I'm anxious is the right word, I guess, but also a little scared because it's like, okay, now, now that I'm going into somewhere where I don't have enough experience. Yeah. Or family. Or family, yeah. I don't have any direction. I'm going to be the first person to do this. What do I do? No. That's good. That's kind of confessional. Thanks for sharing that. That's good. I didn't really see that about because I see you as such a strong personality, but I, I forget how much you're anchored in your family and your friends around here. But to restart in a whole, and you'll do well because you're a people person. Um, but that's still a little bit scary, you know, mm-hmm. going where you don't have any direct contacts. It's scary going to the whole. I'm I'm kind of scared I would say because I am such a people person that I attract all kinds of people like I love getting to know people of all different you know everything so I'm scared that I'm gonna get like I'm gonna start getting like friends that aren't really like Christian and then I'll like kind of fade off from that but I know that my mom She'll be like, uh uh-uh, uh, like, no, like, because she'll be checking in on me, I'm sure. And my grandparents are here, so they will definitely be checking in on me. But I'm, I'm most looking forward to getting to have that responsibility be on myself because I feel like I'll have more motivation to get to know Jesus better on my own instead of just having, like, oh, come on, like, my mom would like, going to church. Like, I'm excited to make it my responsibility so I can't, like, blame, like, oh, well, we didn't go to church or something. Like, I'm excited to, like, have that responsibility because I feel like that's what's going to really change me as, like, a Christian. And I've already made some connections. Like, I, Brandon has some good connections. And then, like, I'm in the FCA group here, and there's a really strong one in Bemidji. And um, so I feel like I'll be okay. But I also think that, um, like, there might be a while where I'm not really sure, like, what I'm doing, like, overall. And I'll kind of drift. But I'll just have to like really make sure that I keep my priorities, like even when I'm lost, to keep my priorities like anchored down and stuff like that. And I know like if I, like my mom was saying, like if you ever feel like misdirected or lost, you can always come back here, like start coming back here if you need to. So I guess it's not as big of a deal for me because I'm not like going super far away. Like I'll ha- still have like my own original roots for me to come back to if I need it. I also don't want to use that as like a crutch. I think as far as like 
fellowshipping with other people in general. Um, God's always given me the, the, the blessing of being able to choose my friends pretty wisely, but I'm still worried that, you know, especially if I go into the military or something like that, you know, there's just that, there's a lot of bad influences there and I would rather not, you know, get in with the wrong crowd and start doing things that I know that I shouldn't be doing. Yeah, you're probably going to have to shave your beard. <laughs> <laughs> no, besides that, though, I mean, a lot of them, you know, in the military, you always hear about it. And obviously yeah. not everybody's the same, but, you know, there's the guys that drink and swear and smoke and do drugs and all that. And that's anywhere now. I mean, it's sad to say, but it is anywhere now. But, you know, especially there, you're living with those people all the time. You can't just, like, you can't just say, oh, I don't want to hang out with you because they live in the same spot as you. So you really have to, you know, keep God at the center of it and have Him there to help you to say no to those things. It's a little scary, but, I mean, that's a huge mission for them. I mean, that's, it can be exciting, too, even though it's going to be hard. Because you're going to stick out, man. <laughs> I mean, you will stick out as a Christian. Just, just to, even if you don't swear, you know, you will stick out. Uh, and that's in all of your spheres of influence, but I'm just I'm thinking specifically in the military. That's a big, big deal. Yeah, I said that like I'm excited for you, but but there will be an opportunity. To do yeah, yours is unique too because of it'd be like a chaplaincy or something like that. As far as your, unless you find fellowship in your barracks or something. But different church looks different. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about campus stuff though, like um, some of the options. Like there are unique options sometimes, like NSU or NSU, or like Campus Crusade, that can be a core piece of it, or uh, InterVarsity, what are the other ones that you guys are aware of? Chi Alpha, you heard of that one? Yeah. Chi Alpha, um, InterVarsity, Campus Crusade. That is another one, that's what Bria does, I forget what it's called though. Um, Those are real dynamic, peer-to-peer, -peer, college and age, and, and it can be a real opportunity for growth spurt even when you get in that kind of fellowship of people just your own age and pretty passionate about Jesus. So there are some really cool non-traditional church uh, fellowship mm -hmm. type opportunities. Well, I know from like looking into Bible colleges, um, I've been told a lot by other people that have been going to like normal public schools, even like like. Uh, Christians that are in like the basic public school, college kind of influence, they they talk about like how much ministry opportunities they have, or like um, they could they've learned so much through programs like these, and so the questions that's always got came back to me was like, so what's the point of going to like a Bible college? You know, if you're not entirely certain that you're going to go into ministry, what's the point when you can do it all here and influence more? Because there you'll be in your own bubble. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah. at the Bible college, as opposed, mm -hmm. yeah. which is a great. I agree with that perspective. I think some people are not sure enough. I can name someone that's come through our student ministry, but it's just like it was actually better for them to go to a secular campus and start to impact mm -hmm. secular. That's it. Whatever. As opposed to actually, the opposite can also be true at some Bible colleges. It's like you're you're at chapel because you have to. Mm -hmm. You're studying this because you have to, as opposed to. Yeah, you want to, or you're self-governing yourself to get into the Bible project. I just threw that in. <laughs> but what you know what I'm saying is like, yeah. it's totally different it, going to a Bible college where you, like that, where you have to do it, and then you kind of get numb to it almost, mm -hmm. to where it's really not self-governing. Anyways, that's kind of what I was thinking even too. Is like, you know, we we hear about the people at the public school colleges or whatever that you know they have all these ministry experiences you go to a bible college you're thinking i'm not going to have a lot of you know uh, opportunities here but you might have more than they have because just because you're at a bible college doesn't mean that everybody's perfect or that mm -hmm. they don't need yeah. help with things either god's going to use you no matter where you go yeah some of those kids at bible i can from experience they're there because their parents made them go there mm -hmm. and so uh they feel like they'll someone will help them figure it out. Yeah. They get there. Yeah. So they need lots of vagaries. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the fellowship. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I, I feel like I mean I don't feel like I know I'm not a people person, and it took me like 
all four years of high school like fine with my people. And I feel like that would be hard for me to like start over. Uh, I mean, yeah. I think a lot of people share that perspective though. Just like it just took me all this time to finally feel like I fit in. I feel like I'll be like starting over. And when I started public school, like ninth grade, I I did not like pick like the best friends and I don't want to do that again. I feel like I'll just be like influenced by like um, Yeah. You didn't start public school till your freshman? Yeah, well, the last month of the eighth grade. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've learned from your past. Yeah. Don't I, do it again. <laughs> no, I just kind of. That's a good example, though. I really like that perspective because because um, you what you've done in these four years will influence what you're going to do the next time. But you know, mm -hmm. we can also learn from like, okay, I don't want to do that again, so I need to. Really being intentional sometimes on the front end of that. And I'm like thankful I, like, I'm thankful that it happened so that I know, like, what I want and what is. Where's Danielle going? Uh, M State. Did she go to M State? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I'm just teasing you. That'd be different because you guys are pretty close friends. And I was like really, really mean to her freshman year, and I like chose like a whole other group of friends over her. And so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that Danielle's still friends with her <laughs> seems like Danielle's new gone. So. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Danielle. <laughs> she was gonna join us today, but didn't make it. Did we skip you, Michael? Did you have any other thoughts? Deep thoughts? Michael always said deep. No, I don't know. I'm not all that deep. <laughs> um, Where are you going again? Uh, I'm, I I'm still don't really going? know. It's kind of up You're in the air. I want to engineering. Yeah, I kind of want to do something along the lines of engineering. I enjoy um, thinking and solving problems. So it's kind of. I wish. <laughs> 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 no. She's gonna be one among us. <laughs> so. I don't really know where I'm going, so as far as being afraid of um, making the wrong decisions, I'm not really all that worried, but just learning and making new friends, that might be a challenge. I've never really had a problem making friends, but... <laughs> so, so that's, confidence. that's good though, it's good that you have confidence that you're not worried about that piece of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 pretty good tractor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> uh, yeah. Zoom it up. You gotta figure out Zoom. I didn't even know that was a real thing. It is a real <laughs> thing. This is the first time I've ever heard of You're gonna be left right behind if you don't get Zoom. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's not okay. Because <laughs> all your teachers. See you later, it's okay. She's gonna be a senior for the next <laughs> three years. <laughs> Super senior. <laughs> I've seen a few of those at your school. <laughs> yes, it happens. I saw one the other day and I'm like, I thought you graduated. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>